the previous week we made these four Nixie tubes and uh, they are now filled with gas and the next step uh, we need to do with them is called aging. Uh, aging makes sure that all the surface of the digits is clean and uniform and it glows uniformly. This is a very important process for longevity of the Nixie tube. This is the device that we made to do the aging process on our Nixie tubes. Uh, this one was modified specifically for the H tube. So the aging process is basically running the tubes at higher current than is the operational current. Higher current means more neon atoms striking the cathodes and cleaning the surface. So currently we have a problem with arcs happening inside the Nixie tube during the aging. When arc happens, uh, it burns away the connection wire or it blows the transistor inside the uh, aging device. Let's look more in detail at this problem. I got here a nice book. It's cold cathode glow discharge tubes from George Frederick Weston. It's a book from 1968. It's kind of Bible of Nixie tube making. So here we have a chart. On the x-axis we have current, on the y-axis we have voltage. And if you increase current going through the Nixie tube, you can see what happens with the voltage. Normally the Nixie tube operates somewhere here in a region called normal glow. And when you need to increase the current, which is what we do during the aging, you go this way, higher. And if you increase the current too much, there is a risk that you reach this point and then arc will happen. We need to increase the current quite a lot because we have the digits oxidized. Uh, the oxidization happens during the sealing of the front window and currently we are fighting with this and trying to lower the amount of oxides on the cathodes. But uh, uh, before we have a solution for this, we need to find a way how to, how to edge the tubes. I got a simple idea which will probably not work, but uh, I would like to try to put in a series with the Nixie tube, I would like to put a rheostat, like a potentiometer, and I hope that it will be enough uh, to suppress the, the current spike when the arc is happening or trying to happen. So the higher resistance we have here, uh, the lower impact on the overall current will have the Nixie tube. It's like a voltage divider. So let's try. If it doesn't work, tomorrow Radim is coming and he will come up with something more sophisticated. Uh, but this is... We need to try this because it's quick enough and worth of the time trying. So this tube is number 21. Zero number. So. Looks like the test was successful. So we started the aging and at the beginning we have some measurements being done on the tube. Still measurements. You can see the incomplete digits. So now it's aging. Number eight is not working. This is the tube that has the connecting wire to the number eight burn off because of the previous problem, the previous arc. This looks good, no arcs. Okay, so few minutes of aging and it arced anyway and burned off something. So I'm going to turn it off and we will see tomorrow.
my quick solution didn't work and another arc destroyed the transistors inside the machine. Uh, but that's fine, the next day Rajim found a problem and also probably a solution. I just need to put this together and test it. Just a quick technical explanation of the problem. Uh, this is the constant power supply that determines the current which flows through the Nixie tube during the aging process. Uh, here we have the Nixie tube, uh, this is the load. Uh, here we have the constant power supply. Uh, this is the transistor which uh, gets blown. And the problem is that when the Nixie tubes go into, into the arc, the resistance on the Nixie tube drops, which is here. And so much higher current starts flowing here. Uh, the transistor is not able to lower its conductivity fast enough which means that the voltage here increases and uh, uh, this voltage uh, which is higher than on the base it's called the, like the reverse voltage it kills the transistor so it's not the current it's it's the spike of the voltage uh, in this place so my goal is to put this together and to screw it up. We have two positions here prepared for aging two Nixie tubes and if this works we will then uh, modify also the remaining four positions. <laughs> It looks like we are getting quite a lot of arcs, but they are not damaging the machine. So it looks like the solution from Radium worked well. And also at the beginning of the aging, at the start of the aging process, there was more of the arcs and now we are getting fewer and fewer of them. The sound of the arcs is terrible. It's like cracking of the glass. This looks good, so let's stop the process and put another one so that they age together. So after many hours the aging is quite stable, there are no arcs at all, but uh, because the digits were heavily oxidized on the surface we can still see a lot of dark areas here. So let's have a closer look. So number 5 looks like the most affected by the oxide. We are at 5 milliamps and now I'm going to increase the current to operating current which is 35 milliamps and at the operating current uh, the glow should already cover full digit. Uh, the problem here is that we still have a layer of oxide in this area and uh, it makes resistance to the glow so it will not cover the whole digit. So let's look at it. So I'm increasing the current, so the current spreads and tries to cover the whole digit and we are already at 35 milliamps and you can see that still this part and this part is not covered with glow, that's because of the oxide on the cathode. So what we need to do now is to put it back on the aging and uh, do another cycle of the aging. Also notice here, uh, the darker area is here is also noticeable during the aging, so we just need to wait now.
Another project we are working on is a vacuum relay. Uh, this is a custom project for a customer who doesn't need it as a functional element, but rather a visual part of his build. There is a prospect that we will build it in a small series and it's very interesting technically, but it seems that it won't you know, get out of control into something too complex, which would distract us from our, like from the Nixie tubes and from the development of the H tube. As for the technical challenges, there is a glass to metal seal to a thick tungsten rod. We normally use wire, so this is interesting to see how it will behave. Uh, there is a brazing of different metals. We never done this under vacuum, so this will be also interesting to, to learn. There is plating of iron with copper and we will need to learn how to do a visually consistent T-joints which is a different glass working technique which we don't do normally. So quite a lot of interesting ch challenges and I can't look forward to get our hands on them. One of the things that we are struggling with is the technique how to connect this steel rod into this tungsten rod. When we look closer to the detail, it looks like a brazing or some material added to this joint. Uh, from this side, the tungsten rod is clean, but when we look on the bottom, there is a layer of some other, other material. So it might have been some, some paste or some other material that was, that was melted to make the joint. So if there is anyone who knows what kind of material or what kind of technique is this, please let me know. I would like to experiment with this and show it in the future videos. Check out. No. Yeah.